So where are we now? Well, that's the best question, and it's, the, and it's the most difficult one to be sure about. But broadly speaking, my view is this. Um, uh, we still have an enormous set of problems to deal in creating a new stable macroeconomics. We haven't done so. You can see that in the Eurozone today. It's perfectly obvious. We haven't, we've had a miserable recovery everywhere, and the Eurozone doesn't, hasn't really had a recovery at all. So we've got, we haven't fixed that. You know, the, where's the demand coming from? We don't have an answer to that question at all. Uh, huge unemployment. But we have huge unemployment. So we haven't solved the macroeconomic demand deficiency problem. In fact, it's got worse. That's a pretty terrible thing to say. And I don't see where the solution is going to come from because we're being so unimaginative about it. And in the Eurozone, I'm really worried about the future for this reason. So we haven't solved that problem. On the financial sector side, uh, I, we are chastened. So the risk-taking is certainly somewhat diminished. In fact, the policymakers are worried that it's too much diminished, which is why we see quantitative easing and all that sort of policy, which is designed to make people take risks again. Uh, so... Uh, people are chastened, leverage has gone down, but in essence we have the same sort of financial sector as we did before. It's still very, very highly leveraged. I mean, it's gone from insane leverage to just very high, but it's still about 25 to 1. You know, there's almost no equity in the system. Still re relies on the risk weighting of assets, which completely failed. Nobody knows what assets are risky. It's even more concentrated than before. So. There are, if like, if you, we worried about having too many too big to fail banks before, we certainly have more of them now relative to the system. The 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 survivors have tended to be the big ones, partly because they were bailed. They were the ones that were everybody bailed out. Yeah, uh, and we've introduced a whole host of incredibly complicated technical regulations whose full impact on the system, I think. It, I certainly don't understand, and I suspect nobody does. Uh, and we certainly don't know how this system will survive under severe, tr under really severe stress. They think they do, um, but I would say the financial sector is certainly less fragile than it was. But whether it is really uh, robust enough, we don't know. Now you're an insider into in this world, and, and still you're uh, suggesting some radical solutions. One of them being basically that. Uh, money is only being distributed uh, the way positive money is suggesting, the Chicago plan, uh, by the government. That Why would correct. that work? Well, it would work. I have no doubt about it. It would have consequences, and I'd love to see someone try. So I'm in favor of experimenting. The first thing I think we've learned from this crisis is we really don't know what the best financial sector is, but I'm pretty sure that the one we have is not it. And Mervyn King, our former governor, is quoted as saying in my book, this is the worst of all possible systems. Why is it the worst of all possible systems? It can create credit with ease. It creates nearly all the money in the system. It has absolutely no capital at all. And it injects, as a result, incredible instability to our economy. And that becomes much worse in a global economy where it's much more difficult to regulate. There are essentially only two ways, I think, of dealing with this that make intellectual sense in the sense that they're simple and powerful and don't involve incredible belief in the wisdom of regulators. The first, which is the simplest one, is to demand uh, roughly five times as much capital in the banks. So you, you insist on really high capital ratios in banks, uh, and that would go along with, as a complement, large, much more liquidity. Fortunately, quantitative easing has generated much more liquidity for the banks. The even more radical proposal, as you said, which was originally advanced by the Chicago School, free market economists, I'd like to point out, was to separate money from finance. So you end the situation in which nearly all the money in our economies, this was a point that Knut Vixell, the great Swedish economist of the late 19th century, noticed, nearly all the money in our economies is created by banks. It's nothing to do with government. They have been basically given uh, a public function. But, of course, it's such an important public function. We can never allow the money supply to collapse because it leads to the Great Depression. Is the government's then necessarily backstop and guarantee all the banks, which means, as I've frequently remarked, banks are part of the state, effectively, and bankers are simply the most highly paid civil servants we have. That's ludicrous. You cannot run a supposedly private economy. Risk, if you take risk, you go wrong, you lose your money, right? 
Everybody loses their money. You lose your job. That's how it's supposed to work. But if instead they know that if anything goes wrong, they're going to be bailed out. And remember, they were all bailed out by everyone in the crisis. And I won't go through all the list of institutions and creditors who would say, many countries, bank creditors came before government creditors, which is cruelly crazy. The Irish government sacrificed its solvency, essentially, for bank creditors. That just makes no sense. So you have to separate the monetary system from the financial system. You can do this through 100% reserve money or some variant of it. Basically, what that means is your accounts in a bank which, and that includes business accounts, all which are for transaction purposes, will be backed by liquid safe assets, which are essentially public assets, uh, which are the responsibility of the public at large. They're completely safe. And the savings of people are invested in other vehicles, mutual funds, all the rest of it, which pass through their investments into companies. Yeah. You have bond markets, you develop securities markets, in a more sensible way, separated from the bank. So, so small and medium enterprises would also borrow in that way. Um, there are lots of technical problems which we probably don't have time to discuss, but this would be a system in which the government could say, with some credibility, we stand behind the monetary system because it's a rock solid. You can be absolutely sure of this. But if you're out in the investment world, you take risks as any investor does.